gaseous exchange in amphibians. Gaseous exchange in amphibians takes place in three main body parts. We have uh, the skin. Gaseous exchange will take place in the skin. It will take place in the buccal cavity that is in the mouth and it will take place in the lungs. When we are talking about gaseous exchange in amphibians, maybe first of all, let us first of all know the organisms that we find in this class amphibian. The amphibians include the frogs, the toads, the newts, and salamanders those are the amphibians and we are seeing saying that gaseous exchange in their body takes place in three body parts it will take place in the skin it will take place in the mouth cavity and it will take place in the lungs. We are going to look at all these systems, how oxygen or gaseous exchange takes place in these systems. We shall start with that one of the skin. The skin of the amphibians is moist and very thin. This means that being moist and very thin, it can easily absorb air from the atmosphere. Because of the moisture, oxygen easily diffuses and because of the thin layer, it easily diffuses into the skin. Oxygen will dissolve in the moisture on the skin and let alone diffuse into the dense capillary network below the skin. Oxygen will be taken to the tissue via the red blood cells and uh, carbon dioxide will move from the blood into the skin surface to the atmosphere and uh, the high concentration of carbon dioxide in blood tissue leads the forcing of uh, carbon dioxide to move out via the skin surface that is the gaseous exchange via the skin we will say that the amphibians have got a moist and thin skin and because of the moisture on the skin surface oxygen easily dissolves in the moisture and because of the thin surface it diffuses into the blood network capillaries below the skin Oxygen is transported in blood to the tissues and then also carbon dioxide is removed from the blood to the skin surface and released into the atmosphere. That is respiration or gaseous exchange in the skin of the amphibians. Now when we come to the use of the mouth or which we can also call the buccal cavity. The frog mouth muscles will contract. And when the buccal cavity muscles contract, the mouth surface is lowered. And the lowering of the mouth surfaces leads to the lowering of the mouth cavity pressure when the mouth cavity pressure is lowered 
that means that the pressure inside the mouth cavity is lower than the pressure in the atmosphere. This will force the air to enter into the mouth via the nostrils. So air is entering into the mouth cavity via the nostrils because the pressure in the mouth cavity is lower than the atmospheric pressure. The mouth cavity of the frog has got a dense network of capillaries and the oxygen in the mouth cavity is going to diffuse into the blood of these blood capillaries. And carbon dioxide is going to diffuse out of the blood into the buccal cavity. Then the flow of the mouth is raised. When it is raised, carbon dioxide is exhaled through the nostrils. What we are saying that gaseous exchange in the mouth cavity or what we call the buccal cavity is due to the muscle contraction of the mouth and when the muscle contract they lower the pressure in the mouth cavity because the pressure in the mouth cavity is lowered below that one of the atmospheric pressure air is forced to enter the mouth cavity via the nostrils and the mouth cavity of the frog has got a high dense network of blood capillaries so oxygen diffuses into the blood in the blood capillaries and it is transported to the tissues carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood tissues into the buccal cavity and the mouth is raised when it is raised it forces out carbon dioxide to the atmosphere via the nostrils that is gaseous exchange in the buccal cavity or the mouth respiration or gaseous exchange in the frogs now we want to look at the third part of the body that takes part that takes part in gaseous exchange and that is the lungs the lungs still the system wants to resemble that one of the buccal cavity only that this time the air is going to go to the lungs the mouth muscles will contract lowering the flow of the mouth cavity in the process of lowering the flow of the mouth cavity the volume of the mouth cavity will increase and increase in the volume means that there is reducing in pressure the pressure of the mouth cavity will reduce below that one of the atmospheric pressure and if it reduces below that one of the atmospheric pressure air moves into the mouth via the nostrils when the nostril closes the mouth flow is raised and as the mouth flow is raised air is forced into the lungs when enter in, air enters into the lungs gaseous exchange takes place between the alveoli of the lungs and the blood because of the high concentration of oxygen in the alveoli and the low concentration of oxygen in the blood that's the reason why oxygen diffuses from the alveoli into the blood carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the blood tissue to the alveoli 
and carbon dioxide will be exhaled out through the nostril by the contraction and relaxation of the lung muscles. So we have seen that using of the lungs is due to the contraction of the mouse, uh, the mouse muscles which leads to the lowering of the floor of the mouth. This increases the volume of the buccal cavity. Increasing the volume leads to reduce in pressure below that one of the atmospheric pressure. Pressure is forced through the nostrils to enter into the mouth. The nostrils are closed and the mouth floor is raised. Air is forced into the lungs and in the lungs, air diffuses into the alveoli of the lungs and the carbon dioxide diffuses out in, from the blood tissues to the alveoli and carbon dioxide is exhaled out through the nostrils due to the contraction and relaxation of the and muscles. That is how gaseous exchange takes place in amphibians. So stay with us next time as we are looking at gaseous exchange in another